September 21st episode of Web Weekly Live. Hello, Steph. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Hard to believe another week's gone by. And here I know. we are in, uh, staring down the end of September, going to be October. I know. It's crazy how, how fast summer's blown by and the leaves are starting to turn. And it's, it's fall. It's fall. Wonderful. Um, and nothing says fall quite like everything that we've got going on in this week's edition of Web Weekly. We've got a lot going on. Well, we might as well get right into it. All right. Well, our cover story is the Mentorsville Fall Festival. Um, put on by the the Kiwanis Club. It's always a great event, and it is. Um, I hear they scare you a little bit with their fireworks they, every they, year. They do. They're right uh, right over the hill from where I live, and the fireworks rattle my glass every year. <laughs> and uh, the first year we lived there, we actually wondered what in the world is that. And uh, we look forward to it. We can see the fireworks. Just a good community event. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. And, um, you know, also along the vein, if you don't mind taking a bit of a drive, the Bloomsburg Fair starts this week, and that's always a great symbol of fall around here. Bloomsburg Fair, and it makes me wish I was in high school so I could skip school and go to the Bloomsburg Fair. <laughs> you got to love those those area traditions Absolutely. of everybody skipping school to go to the Bloomsburg Fair. Um, uh, our football coach, Ken Robbins, at the time, he actually would let us – there was a day designated to go to the Bloomsburg Fair, so you didn't take away from football practice. No. But anyway. Um, and, of course, you know, fall around here means fall home improvement. Fall that home improvement. That comes out this week. We got over 90 businesses to help you with all your fall home improvement needs, so be sure to check that out. Uh, largest special section of the year, fall home improvement in the Web Weekly. That or spring, stuff, which is usually. I think fall is a little bigger. Fall is a little bigger. But, hey. If you have anything to do around the house, whether it's something as simple as painting to, to putting in a new swimming pool, putting on an addition, we do this special section every year and we make sure we get the most reputable contractors. We make sure that if we know somebody might not be above board stuff, they're not in the pages of the Web Weekly, we can't control all of it, but it's a great guide. Keep it around your house through the course of the year. You have a way to look somebody up, find somebody, or or maybe a home improvement jumps up. Absolutely. You had that happen, right? Yeah, yeah. Got a driveway done recently. You never know when you're gonna when you're gonna need one of the Web Weekly advertisers to help you out. And, so. and um, painless, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Quick, easy. Good. So, um, and then I also have a story this week. You know, in the vein of fall, I've got a great chili recipe that I found. Um, in a great book to read, nothing for me is a better fall day than uh, cooking and yeah. reading. So, well, I, the reading thing not so much, <laughs> but we love chili in the web house, and uh, the only requirement is it has venison in it. It's right. made with venison. Well, I didn't make mine with with venison, but you could easily substitute that out. So. Perfect, and and that's, I mean, chili is a wonderful thing. I've had so many different types of chili, and and everybody puts their little different. Idea. Yeah, I have, I have a hard time with it. it. Chili is one of the only things that I've made over the years that I managed to make really, really badly. Really? One time, and so I was a little gun-shy to ever try it again, but I found a recipe that was supposed to be a um, Wendy's chili oh. kind of um, well, we love Wendy's mock. Chili. So, yeah, we'll try it out. It was really good, so I'll pass it along to you guys. Excellent. Um, so I think that brings us to our trivia question and our giveaway. Fun time of the show. Yeah. You like giving my money away. I do. Away, I like giving your money away. Which so. I actually, I, I don't, I'm good with that. But <laughs> but what do we got? We have a $50 gift card to Ichiban this week. Wonderful so. place to go down in the Golden Strip. Uh, Candy and Ken do a great job at Ichiban. The web boys, they, they like spending my money too at Ichiban. <laughs> so. Um, so our trivia question this week um, in honor of our upcoming guest is, um, who was the first person elected to represent Lycoming County in the United States Congress? Um, so answer below, once again, who was the first person elected to represent Lycoming County in the United States Congress? Um, post your answer below, first person, $50 gift card to Ichiban. Just a reminder that if you've won anything in the last 30 days, hold out, let somebody else have a chance to win. Wonderful. Good question. I do not know that question. I'm anxious to hear the answer. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else going on? I think that that's about it, except we've got a good guest coming up. We do have a good guest, but before we get to him, uh, thank you to everyone on Friday nights that's enjoying Web Weekly Live, uh, high school football, the best teams, the best players, uh, the kids in your neighborhoods. And uh, Gary, Crispin, Babe, Mayor have been doing an outstanding job. Their 30 year, uh, 30th anniversary of Cable Sports Productions, we have them on. And we have Jamie Spencer, Paul McGinn, PA Sports Live team. Absolutely. And uh, we, we end up with a Web Weekly player of the game out of that one, uh, which is fantastic. And 
I'm not good with technology. <laughs> But I overheard a number that Gary's Gary Christman's game that had like twenty five thousand views or That's what I've been hearing and that's what I've been seeing when I go to um look through the replays. I've been getting people who I didn't even know watched football approaching me about how great it is to see these two um games every week. So uh, But anyway, I, mean, I might be a little bit I'm not too far off that number, but one thing I wanna just take a moment. We're we are um bringing you something new that, that hasn't been offered before. And we're having some problems. We do have some technical problems, and, and I can tell you this, it bugs the heck out of me, and we will get them corrected, mm -hmm. and we will get this fine-tuned where it's like you're sitting at the game watching it, and whether you're watching it on your cell phone, your laptop, your 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 whatever. Yep. And, and um, just bear with us, a few technical problems, mm -hmm. but... One thing I can tell you, we've checked into it. Nobody's offering what we're offering anywhere in the country right now. There's no place you can go to and get two ball games live, um, watch them both, watch one. And, and, and the technology isn't, as we reach out to some higher up people, us and media service, the technology is lagging a little behind in the live streaming. And it will soon be there. Um, we're, we'll, we'll be perfect, but it's just not there but um, too much said on that. Bear with us if there's a technical problem, text me. I know everybody has my number. Let me know so I know and we'll get it corrected and uh, keep on watching. And uh, Steph, anything to add? No, like I said, you know, it's been, it's been great and the response has been great. And yes, there's been a bit of a learning curve as, as we go along, but we'll get it together. We'll work yeah. it out in the Web Weekly way. And um, the one thing I can tell you is the people I have working with me Nobody cares more than they do and want to get this ironed out so it's Absolutely. perfect. And then the, the beauty of it is after it's live, uh, the game is archived, it's posted, and you can watch it, and it's perfect. Uh, the only time there might be some tif tif technical difficulty is, is, what's it called, buffering? Yeah, or? during yeah, it's during the live stream itself. There is some buffering and things like that. But like you said, webweeklylive.com, click on game replays. When you're watching the replay, everything is there, perfect, ready to go. So even if you have a few skips and jumps during the live, you can always go back and watch it again and see it without issue. So. And that'll take us to our first commercial break. We'll go down to the Kaiser boys at uh, Fairfield Dodge Chrysler Jeep, see what's going on. I know there's uh, some great deals on trucks. For over 30 years, Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has had an unyielding commitment to hometown values. And we know how important those are to you. When you think Fairfield, you think unrivaled service. And of course, it's where Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Rams cost less. Check out deals like this during the celebration event and Ram Power Days event. Fairfield for fair deals. Fairfield, you're gonna love us. And we're back. And uh, it's about time that we, we have our weekly guest. And uh, we're going to head out to see um, Congressman Tom Marino. Um, we're going to sit down, chat with him, and um, see what he has to say about what's going on in the country and the county. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So let's head to Congressman Marino's office. We'll head over, and, and, and don't worry, I will be asking him about Donald Trump. have a special guest with us here today. We've been invited down to uh, Congressman Tom Marino's office. And um, thanks for the offer. Come down and see you. My pleasure, anytime. Steph and I enjoy getting out, yeah. um, as you do. I know. Yeah, I tell my staff all the time. <laughs> Few meetings in the office get me out to where the action is. How about it? And, and I, I don't even know how long we've known each other now. Oh, gosh. But, but your um, father was a big supporter of mine. That's where I was going to start out, Mr. A, Mr. Mr. Webb. Long, long Mr. Time. Webb and you had a great relationship, yeah, we did. and. Uh, and you two worked together before I might have known you, probably. I think so. I, I, I met your father when I started working at the McNerney Law Firm. Huh. My, and Max Hall introduced me to him back in 1988. Oh, so wow. I'm showing my age. <laughs> I got out of law school. Fantastic. And, and obviously, you've been involved in politics now. Oh, wow. If we do the math, 30 yeah, years, yeah, right? Yeah, since I've been uh, out of law school. Fantastic. And... Let's just get right after it. You're in Washington now. You're fighting for us back home. Yeah. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, it's tough. You and I talk probably uh, sporadically about different things, but why don't we start right with Miss Nancy Pelosi and, <laughs> and how it, it warmed my heart when you upset her and, and uh, 
talk a little bit about that and what you heard back from fellow uh, Lycoming Countyans and sure, Pennsylvanians. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, you know I'm a term limit person. And I think not only on the Democrat side with Nancy Pelosi, but on the Republican side as well, people are tired of the same old establishment in, in D.C. And my experience with her, which was uh, unique to say the least, because I still keep saying that she is my best campaigner. Oh. And I cannot go anywhere in this country without someone saying to me, weren't you the guy that that... Nancy Pelosi was chasing around in the House floor. I was even in, I'm vice president of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, so I go overseas several times a year and talk to other North Atlantic Treaty members. And I still have once in a while uh, people say, I saw you on TV here in Belgium or here in France. That's something that took place back in Washington, D.C. But yeah, it was just, it's a perfect example of leadership thinking that they're better than anyone else, that they're royalty, that they're entitled to be where they're at. Well, the term limits is near and dear to my heart, and you and I have talked in depth about yeah. that. And and I believe you. I trust you. I know you want term limits. Absolutely. But some of these folks, they are just never going to concede and give up the party power and their power. But I honestly think I was waiting for her to take her broom and hit her, hit you with her that well, day. Well, I, mean, I, I, I was doing, I wasn't supposed to be on the floor that day. And she was making a speech of all the terrible things about the Republicans as far as immigration is concerned. Absolutely. And I said to... She actually made a statement if it was up to the Republican, if up to the Republicans, there would be no immigration. Yes, yeah. and what she was talking about is amnesty. And yeah. I'm not for total amnesty at all. I don't think any of us should be. We don't know who's coming into the country and who's here now. But the, th the thing of it was, I said to the Republican chairman who was managing the debate on the floor, are you going to address this? And I was like, no. Nah. And he said, do you want to? And I said, you bet I do. So I stood up and said, wait a minute. Under the leadership of you, uh, Ms. Pelosi, you had uh, Barack Obama was uh, in the presidency for two years. You were the Speaker of the House. You had the majority in the House for those years. And the Democrats had the control in the Senate for those years. So why didn't you people do something about immigration? You, you asked... did nothing about immigration, yeah. except for you wanted absolute amnesty for anybody that was here illegally. That's not handling immigration. And the next thing I knew, she came over across the floor, which is a breach of etiquette on the, on the House floor, calling me a liar. And I was more or less on the microphone as she was. You're lying, you're this, you're that. And I said, no, I do my homework. You should do your research because uh, you are not telling the people the truth when you had the, the uh, power. And then the, uh, the speaker at that time, the... Pro temp, meaning the temporary speaker, wasn't the actual speaker, uh, said to me, direct your comments to the chair, which we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be arguing with each Absolutely. other. It's supposed to be, you know, speaker this and that speaker that. That whole floor that. etiquette right. thing, like you said. And I said, wait a minute, doesn't that go both ways? <laughs> and then you actually heard somebody, the, the, the congresswoman on her side, the Democrat, simply saying, what is she doing now? And then... They got her back, and then I went back to finishing up my speech and said, you know, obviously I had a nerve here because of it, and she came running across again. But I didn't know she was running across that time because I stopped speaking, uh, handed back the time that I had available, and then walked up, and she was coming up behind me. And well, that's when she, I turned around and she told me that, uh, uh, what she called me, so I just simply said, uh, you are incredibly arrogant, and you are part of the reason why we have the problems that we're having in this, in this country. And they had to security had to take her off the floor. So the sergeant I know, I thought arms, she was going to hit you with her broom. I, so, I'm not joking. Sergeant in <laughs> arms, and security had to take her off the floor. And she, uh, uh, I said, geez, 
You should have let her hit me. I probably could have been a millionaire today. I, we, we shouldn't have spent too much time, and yeah. especially. But I, I think it's important because I don't know if anybody really heard that whole story like you just told. Well, but the insignificant. She not only said I was insignificant. She oh, was yeah. saying to the American people, "You're we insignificant. insignificant. Yes. You're insignificant. You don't matter." I was only there a year, I so best. I didn't matter. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I have control here. Uh, I'm the leader, and I've been here longer than you. So, and I'm better than you. And it turned out being a blessing in disguise because the, it was. It really was. And and here we are talking. To, there's so much good that you're doing. And and the only negative thing, and I might as well say it, I, I wasn't happy with your fellow Republicans getting your back on that issue. And I don't want. We yeah. won't go get into that because yeah. I could name some, and I probably shouldn't do that. But it was a great opportunity, beginning with the leader of the House. Yeah. It, it was a great opportunity, and I just don't think we. I don't think the Republican Party used it like they should have. Because, it, like you said, she came, yeah. she showed her hand, and we left yeah. her to cover it up. None Steph, you got anything to add to that? None of the leadership said anything. I did have colleagues on the floor saying it's about time someone stands up. Yeah, but, you so. know, there's one thing to say, hey, it's a good job, good job, way to stick your neck out. Meanwhile, they're whispering to you from behind. Yeah. <laughs> you can Steph, leadership on both I know sides you're not a big Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi well, I think in, in this particular case, I mean, it really comes down to professionalism as a whole. Um, you know, you, you're not going to have experiences like that in, in any other office, and it's, you know, probably not particularly appropriate in such a public forum. Sure. So. My well, I remember what my father said. My father said to me, son, you're going to have to learn this quickly. Don't ever get into an argument with a woman, <laughs> a lady, because he always referred to as ladies and I, and I wasn't, I was a gentleman. I didn't uh, call any names, uh, I, I, I didn't shout and carry on, and I just remembered, be a gentleman with a lady. Yeah, you were tremendously calm. And it's a good thing it was you and not me there, <laughs> because I could have never. Hey, we gotta take a commercial break for our, uh, for the Kaiser boys, Fairfield Dodge Chrysler Jeep, and uh, some great sales on trucks down there. For over 30 years, Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has had an unyielding commitment to hometown values. And we know how important those are to you. When you think Fairfield, you think unrivaled service. And of course, it's where Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Rams cost less. Check out deals like this during the celebration event and Ram Power Days event. Fairfield for fair deals. Fairfield, you're gonna love us. And we're back with Congressman Marino. Wow. So now that we've gotten through some of the drama, <laughs> let's talk about some of the business. Tell us sure. what's going on in Washington, D.C. What's going on that is, that is happening and is important to the country right now? Sure. The most important thing when I head back to the D.C. tomorrow, it's the last week probably before we break for the October uh, recess because of the election coming up. Right. And it's, are we going to pass uh, what we call a CR, a continuing resolution, meaning that we're going to vote to fund the government for a temporary period of time so it doesn't shut down. But I have a little bit of a problem with that. Matter of fact, I have a big problem with that. It's simply saying we're going to continue to spend the way we have been spending. And we're spending at least uh, a half a billion to... Uh, excuse me, no, uh, a half a trillion dollars to a trillion dollars uh, more than we bring in each year. So I'm going to have a very difficult time with that, uh, just simply saying, you know, let's continue to do that. When we had a two-year period to talk about where are we going to cut, are we ever going to pass a balanced budget, budget amendment to say we cannot spend more than we, we bring in. And I want to just say something about the balanced budget amendment. As soon as we pass that, it doesn't mean that we're going to spend no more than what we bring in this country because we're so far in debt. We're $20 trillion in debt. That's going to take several years to get to the point where we do not have to borrow money to pay our debts. I don't think the American people have any idea of the lack of fiscal responsibility it takes to get our country to the point that it's at. 
and then we still don't want to balance a budget. We still want to just keep funding bureaucracy. And I know it, it just infuriates you. And, it, and I'm sitting here thinking, Jim, don't just don't say anything. But <laughs> we have to speak up. How we vote for people that don't want to vote, first of all, term limits. We, we, the three things are next president. I mean, I had 10, but one, number one was put God back in everything we do. And we need to start giving honor words. Number two was term limits that I said. We need to establish term limits because you'll never change the game until you have term limits. Right. Number three was we have to immediately have a balanced budget. But I know you'll never balance a budget until you get term limits. How frustrating is it for you? Because I could, I, everything I'm saying, you could, I, if I have it amassed, I could put it on and talk and I'd be yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. How frustrating must it be for you? Tell well, me. Well, I had uh, a bit more hair before I went to Congress than I have now, and it was dark brown. So you can imagine what we're going through, but we're getting more and more newer members in Congress. There was 88 in our class, and there was significantly less than the next election and election after that. But we hold the largest majority in the Republican House uh, since the 1920s. So we do have an impact, and we've passed good legislation. I, I'm getting tired of the media saying Congress is doing nothing. Oh. Now, wait a minute. Since I've been in Congress in 2011, so this is my sixth year, we have passed at least four over 400 pieces of legislation when Harry Reid had control of, this, of the Senate for four years, but he refused one person the leader of the Democrats and the leader of the Senate for a four-year period refused to allow this legislation to go to the Senate floor for a vote because uh, President Obama did not want him to do that because he would have to veto all that prior to a, a second term. So that's another piece of legislation, legislation I've been dropping, simply saying no leader can stop a piece of legislation from going to the floor for a vote if it makes it out of committee. And we passed thousands of pieces of legislation in the, in the last six years uh, that creates jobs, that gets rid of regulation, that crushes jobs, no oh, yeah. matter if you're a farmer or if you're in the, in the food market business or if you're in the automobile business, regulations and debt just keep climbing and climbing. And all that, this is why I, I say when, I just was on the, the telephone, with a, a radio station from Philadelphia. And I get this question all the time, and when I answer it, they're like stunned. And they finally say, you have a point there. My, and that what I do is I ask this question, it's rhetorical. I simply say, how has it been going the last 30 or so years with presidents being governors and senators and career politicians? We are $20 trillion in debt. 20 million people are out of work or underemployed. Businesses are leaving the country in droves. We have open borders, a failed health care system. Uh, people haven't had a raise. Those that are working, basically, uh, the, their standard of living hasn't increased for 13 years. I thought we said that um, politics was never meant to be a career. No. That you were supposed to go no. do your service and then come back home to your job or right. your right. actual career. I, I've never really understood the idea of a, of a career politician. I don't really think that that's what it was supposed to be. It was not to. intended no. for that. No, the framers of the Constitution Tuition. just simply, they were farmers and entrepreneurs. They went to Philadelphia, New York for a little bit, uh, and then spent most of their time back in their district, and then someone else ran for the position. Well, somewhere along the lines, and, and I'm not going to take, I, I'm, I'm going to write this, I have written it, but somewhere along, the problem is, is that democracy and government doesn't work when somebody realizes that there's a lot of money to be had hmm. if you betray the system. Once people realize that you could betray, betray the system that it was intended to be government of the people, for the people, by the people. Hmm that there was a whole lot of money being made. Once that happened and that door was open, it's hard to close that door. Sure. And that's where a country's at. It's the fact that they figured out that democracy, ultimate freedom of government, people think of for the people, but it's in government too. You can get elected and manage and, and that has killed our country once they figured that out. 
And I don't want to blame either party. I think there's enough blame to go. Most definitely. Uh, around. Around. Say 30 but I years. do want to say this, and this isn't intended as a knock on any lawyers, because a lot of my friends are lawyers. I mean, I where our government really got in trouble was why the high number of lawyers, because the lawyers write documents that only lawyers understand. And our, co our country wasn't intended in that way either. Our country and government was intended in the yeah. founding that anybody could read a document and clearly understand. Yeah. So now you have people that might not have the greatest in intention that can write documents that nobody understands. Well, That's a big problem. It, it is. Well, first of all, <laughs> when people say you're a lawyer, say no, I'm a prosecutor. So <laughs> There's a big thing. being a prosecutor. And, and I'm not. And understand, well, I'm not I criticizing say to the lawyers. The, I say to the lawyers that uh, who are writing this, I take the paragraph, one paragraph out of the piece of legislation, and I said, why don't we just say this in one sentence? So, you know, the main, you know, uh, middle class Americans can, can understand. open that yeah. document and say, I know exactly what they're saying from the beginning. Yeah, P period. And give us, give us the cliff notes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Listen, if you, I do that on my website, I really break it you down. You do. Into, and I, hey, we got to take a commercial break or we'll talk. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about the political revolution you began in the great state of Pennsylvania. And to our good friends at Fairfield, and we'll be right back. Over 30 years, one family of dealerships has grown to include 14 brands at eight locations on an unyielding commitment to hometown values, an unrivaled service, selection, and customer satisfaction for 30 years. Fairfield. For fair deals, you're gonna love us. And we're back with Congress, Congressman Tom Marino. And in a nutshell, you were the first one that really came out in the state of Pennsylvania and supported Donald Trump. In Congress, in the United States. In the United States. And you took a little heat for it at first. Yeah. And, and then it, it sort of became a political uh, snowball rolling downhill. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that quickly and how that all became about. I, I mean, I know how, share us. I'm Donald's chair for the state of Pennsylvania, and I'm a surrogate go speaker around the country for him. But the bottom line is, again, I listened to my constituents, and I knew immediately that they were sick and tired of the establishment, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. Right. Because, you know, look at the debt. Uh, and, that, and that's the biggest thing accumulated. the Republicans don't understand. Oh, I blame the Republicans they, just they, as they much as I they blame don't the get Democrats. It, that, that them voting for Donald Trump is saying we're sick of you yeah. old school Republicans. That's it. Too. Okay. And uh, this isn't a Republican or a Democrat movement. No. This is a populist movement. I have not only, of course, Republicans, but I have Democrats and independents saying, Tom, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yep. And it's not kicking the can down the road anymore. It's kicking a barrel down the road because of the debt that we're dragging, just, yep. maybe dragging a barrel. Just, just think <laughs> since George Bush won, we have increased the debt overall by about 16 or 17 trillion dollars. Okay. So. A, lot, a, a lot of money. But again, I'm glad America is waking up. I'm glad hardworking taxpayers and even people that said to me, look, I'm on welfare. I don't want to be on welfare. I want a job. I want to be able to provide for my family. And people are on unemployment. I don't want to be on unemployment. But you know something? We can't take people off unemployment and welfare until we have jobs. Something for them to go to. And the way to have it's jobs a... is lower the corporate tax. Get yes. rid of job-crushing regulation and industry is going to come back to this country, and we're going to be, we're going to have good-paying jobs, and people are going to say, "Sign up for unemployment. Uh, I don't want unemployment anymore. I don't want welfare. I want to go to work, and I want to go into a factory. I want to produce something, and we want to make America great again." So this is a populist movement, and you, and uh, you will be amazed at the people that never voted or haven't voted in the last 20 years, regardless of party, saying, "I'm voting for Trump." And, and um, I'll put it right out there. I don't think we have two good candidates, period. I don't think, I, I mean, Donald Trump is the lesser of two evils in my mind. I don't like a lot of the things he says, does, but we don't have much of a choice. We 
have Hillary and we have Donald yeah. Trump. Do you ever, and, and I know and I know you're going to play this, politi- do you ever wish that he would help his cause, help himself, not stick his foot in his mouth? We don't agree on things. And I have these meetings with him, and I look him in the eyeball and say, stay off of getting into a fight with someone. Uh, Tell the American people how you're going to improve the quality of li- their lives, as you have been saying. And he says to me, you know, people don't talk to me the way that you do. And, and it's simply... Do you want me to leave? Tell no, me. I want you. Me. I want you to keep telling me uh, what he, he's, he's learned so much. But I, I, I he's the think... only candidate out of both sides, out of both parties, who's created tens of thousands of jobs. Absolutely. So I want someone in there that's going to create we, jobs. We, we have, we, the bottom line is we, we have, we're dying a slow death. Yes. Yeah. So we, we have to t- make a change. But let me finish with this as far as We don't want Hillary Clinton appointing Supreme Court justices. She could appoint two to four Supreme Court justices, which means this country will swing way left. Our Second Amendment rights will go. Our First Amendment right to speech will go. We'll have a bigger government and more taxes on us. And Donald Trump's the opposite of that. Well, and and I agree. Steph, you want to jump in? I know you're... Well, I mean, I obviously you know that I have concerns about Donald both, Trump. Well, both candidates really. Um, you know, as as a woman, Donald Trump is a little disconcerting for me. But I mean, it's like you said. You know, it's it's come down to a lesser of two evils, and, and I don't like that either. That's really not fair to Sounds our terrible. country to yeah. have to choose between, you know, well, which one's less bad. So I think we've got a we've got a big problem in in our country with that, and I really wish that there was a way to um, you know change that, and and you know hopefully as we we get through the next few years, you know a, a stronger candidate will emerge from one side or the other, but someone who is quite frankly a little less offensive because both of them are more than a little offensive. So well, I, I think the American I, I applaud your efforts, and I think you've done a tremendous job in helping support. A different choice because if we would have had just another run-of-the-mill Republican and Hillary Clinton, we're, we're, we're back with the party establishment mm-hmm. and nothing's going to change. Mm-hmm. However, I mean, Donald Trump gets elected. I we we got to get some term limit issues. I mean, he's got to jump on the and and well, let's. You, and do that's you think where, it, I'm going to call it the way it is? That's where regardless. I'm, Who's in the White House? Right. Republican or Democrat, and they know this, and Donald knows this, and there is a, a, more, a growing group of us, and I will be at the front of that, speaking out that this is has this has to be done, and you said in your campaign that you were going to do this. Now you got to be focused on this, and I will be the first person out there criticizing him if it's not done, and and more than criticizing, making it known publicly that no, well, this isn't I, what you told and, us, and I think. The thing that Donald Trump gives gives us is an opportunity for change. Nothing's going to change with yeah. Hillary. I mean, the Clinton Foundation. Nobody has built has has dishonestly built more money in the name of the United States yeah. government out of private citizens and promised favors. It just amazes me that people don't want to look at. If I did that in a public sector like I am now, I go to jail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And then the fact, no matter what you look at, she ne- she has not answered. She has not answered. You and I talked about this one unscripted question yeah. since she began to run for presidency. Not one question. Everything is sanitized and sterilized mm-hmm. that she talks about. Everything is provided. How in the world can the American people vote for somebody that I can't come ask them or you can't? Hey, tell us. We don't even know who she is. How can you vote you. for somebody? who's sitting in front of the FBI, and there's, that's a segment for a, a whole other interview, but who has said 38 or 39 times, I don't recall or I don't remember. Now, that's one of the first things that a good defense attorney will tell his client if they're looking at criminal charges like she was on lying under oath to Congress. What would have, have, happened, what would have happened to any Republican if they would have done what Hillary Clinton yeah. did? The media, I mean, the media would have been uh, the eighty-five percent of the liberal media would have been out there, and that's all you would have heard consistently. And I, mean, I, I have good friends that are defense lawyers, and I know what they say to the client: if you're being interviewed, particularly by the federal agents, because it's a crime, it's a federal crime if you lie to a federal agent. You either take the Fifth Amendment, 
you don't lie, or you, you certainly don't lie, and to avoid lying, simply say, I don't recall or I don't remember. Because how are you going to prove it in your mind if they don't recall or they don't remember? But after 39 times, either somebody's not telling the truth or they have a memory problem. Maybe both. I, I better just shut up. We better move on. You and I could talk all day, and we will. We're going to come back and, uh, oh, and get pleasure. together. Thank you, you so much. No, it's, it's and closer privilege. to election Thank time, you you and uh, we'll take it away uh, to our friends at Fairfield, and uh, we'll have Juliana up next. Over 30 years, one family of dealerships has grown to include 14 brands at eight locations on an unyielding commitment to hometown values and unrivaled service selection and customer satisfaction for 30 years. Fairfield, for fair deals, you're gonna love us. Hello, I'm Juliana from WebKids. Here with me I have Dory Rankinen, parade coordinator of the Mummers Parade this year. Hello Dory, how are you doing? Hi, I'm wonderful. How are you doing, Juliana? Good, thank you. So, how long has the parade been running? Well, believe it or not, this is going to be the 71st annual Mummer's Day Parade this year. So, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roughly, how many entries do you get each year? Oh, I don't know exactly, but I would say we have over 150 entries. It is a lot, but we are getting more and more every day. As a matter of fact, today I got a call from a gentleman who wants to come down from Kogan Station with his granddaughter, and they want to be riding their horses, and they're going to get costumes for both themselves and the horses. How late can the entries be turned in? Well, we like to have them in by October 1st because that means we'll be able to do our parade lineup and we'll know where everyone's going to fit in and then we can notify them where to line up at the day of the parade. How, about like how many judges are on the stands each year? I believe there are eight and some of them have been with us several decades. About how long is the walk? Oh, boy, I guess if you would talk to some of the band members carrying the heavy instruments, they'd say it's more than two miles, but I think it's about two miles. Is there anyone you would like to give a shout-out to that made a big donation to the parade? Well, I'll tell you what. We have a lot of wonderful businesses in both the Williamsport, Loyal Sock, and South Williamsport area that are supporting the parade, but one of our special donations has come from Party City. They would like everyone to know that they are affiliated and support the Mummer's Day Parade, and they're even offering a 10% discount to anyone who is in the parade and wants to come down and get a costume for the group. So they just have to bring their entry form and show the manager, Faith Weaver, and she'll give them a 10% discount. Well, I hope you have good weather that day. Me too. And I'm really looking forward to the parade. Well, good. I'll look for you there. <laughs> okay. I'm Juliana from WebKids. See you later. And we're back from another great segment with Juliana. We, she's been missed around here the last couple of weeks. She has. It's her energy and effort. And it's just good to have her back. And uh, uh, Dory on the parade, she's going to do great things. It's good to see somebody new and some some new energy into the parade. Yeah, it's Dory's first year, and I'm excited to see what she does with the parade and going forward. And, of course, we'll have all the details coming up in a couple of weeks on the cover of our October 12th edition. Excellent. You always do a great job with the Mummer's Parade. I try. So Lou, I, Lou gets all the details. We leave it in his hands. I just like to come over during parade day and take the candy from the kids out front. So. Jimmy, haven't we talked about you not taking I, candy from babies? I know. I shouldn't do that, but... Anyway, anything else we're missing? Well, you don't have a player of the week this week. Oh, I do have a player of the week. Uh, we're doing something new. Uh, Web Weekly Live uh, have, have had great viewership on the two high school football games mm -hmm. live streamed, and uh, we're doing a show. It's uh, Web Weekly Live Touchdowns and Tailgates. Mm -hmm. Gary Crispin's on with me. Uh, Tuesday, we're taking a unique look at uh, high school football up and down the West Branch Valley. And um, my player of the weeks, we announced on that, it can be viewed. It's archived at, at webweeklylive.com catch all Web the replays my player of the week was Gideon Green from Southside um, had a great game against North Penn um, 51 carries I believe for 312 yards that sounds like a lot 
That is a lot. And a fantastic night. And I got to talk with a good friend of mine, Coach Chris Eisworth, head coach of the Mounties. But I won't talk about it. Check it out. Yeah, webweeklylive.com. And uh, other than that, anything else? I think that's about it for today. I, I guess we need to talk about something serious. The driving in our area, there's been a lot of un- unfortunate fatalities. And uh, you're out there. Absolutely. It's dangerous. It's dangerous out there. So please take the time, be careful, put the cell phones down. Don't be texting, don't be looking. Too many distractions, and uh, we need to clean it up on our highways. Absolutely. So another issue in the book? Absolutely. So as always, God bless America.